This is Crystal Fan with MedPage Today here in Denver at the Heart Rhythm Society meeting where Dr. Bruce Wilkoff of the Cleveland Clinic has reported registry results suggesting strategies for reprogramming defibrillators to reduce shocks. Defibrillators are not medications and there's a, there's a categorical difference between the two. Um, medications, you take a pill, what you get is what you took. Um, on the other hand, defibrillators are not that way. Uh, they're malleable and they're malleable on the basis of a number of things, some clinical parameters, but in particular, they're under the control of the physician um, and the choices that he makes and the programming choices that are being made. There were many factors involved in the risk of shocks among the patients studied. Virtually everything we looked at had a statistically significant and an important difference. And so the, there's an incredible power in what, in what the choices that are being made by these doctors. Um, and these are all thought to be clinically important, but by making these observations, we're hoping that people will make choices that will allow the defibrillators to be just as helpful, but not as uh, uh, harmful in terms of symptoms and such like that. So having a slower detection rate was associated with a, uh, a much larger uh, shock rate. Uh, people who had shorter detection uh, durations, so if we let if you had a short direction, detection duration, you'd detect it and treat it. But if you waited a little longer, it might stop on its own, and that's what it often did. Um, and in particular, uh, we found out that atrial fibrillation uh, was a risk factor for getting a shock, but if you had a controlled rate, um, you did much better than if you had a much faster rate. 110 beats per minute is really not all that fast, but in this case, it made all the difference in the world. And matter of fact, it also had an interaction with how you detected what rate it would be, 150, 160, 170, 180 beats per minute. And if you had 188 beats per minute versus somebody had no AFib, you had a 244% uh, increased risk of getting a shock. So this is, uh, I think, important data because it tells us about how people, what people are doing. I think it's important data because uh, it allows physicians to reconsider the choices that they're making. So physicians can help reduce the number of shocks patients are getting while still maintaining device efficacy. Here in Denver at the Heart Rhythm Society meeting, I'm Crystal Fend, MedPage Today.